So far in the implementation of methods or functions, we have covered a lot of topics such as prototyping a function, defining a function, calling a function, passing the arguments into it and so on. Here in this video, we are going to cover another very crucial concept of the functions that is recursion. Recursion is basically something when a method calls itself. So basically when we will talk about recursion, if suppose we have defined a method called m1 or method1, in the definition of that particular method, we will be calling that same method. So whenever we will start calling that particular method, within the call stack, you will get the multiple instances of the same method. Like the first method, the first time when we will call the method and then after on a particular condition, the method would be calling itself. So in this stack, there will be the same method will be pushed in multiple times. If you will not apply a valid condition, then maybe you will find a situation that the uh, stack is overflown by the same method and you will not be able to get the correct output as well. So here in this video, we are going to discuss, we are going to see a practical implementation where a method will be calling itself and the concept will name as recursion. So let's see a simple program using recursion. So now in this implementation of recursion as you can see I have defined a couple of method like first one is factorial and the second one is main. So obviously the execution will start from the main method where I have taken the value of i to 15. You can take any particular number which factorial you want to find. So for this example, let's take a small number so that we can get it easily. And here I have given a value 5. Now, during the printing the of message, like the factorial of a number is that. So in this particular message, what I'm doing is, I'll print the value of i, that is 5, and then the factorial of 5, that is 120. So if I'll execute, let's see whether the output is correct or not. Yep, so output is correct. So let's go and understand how this recursion is working in this program. Now, here you can observe like in the printf it's, itself, I have invoked the method factorial, which is returning me an integer value. So this factorial will get uh, invoked and I'll pass the value 5. So in the first invocation of this factorial, it will contain 5 in the parameters all right so if i that is this parameter is greater than 1 which is it is obviously greater sorry is less than or equal to if it is less it will return 1 itself all right but if it is not since 5 is not less than or equal to 1 so this condition will not work and what will happen it will just say i into factorial i minus 1 all right means inside the same i'm calling the another instance of the same method so it will basically generate the stack it's inside so let's understand how that stack is working here in the first invocation of factorial i pass the value 5 inside all right now inside this i again call this and whatever value it will return I will just multiply that value with i, alright? So i is currently 5 in this particular case, that is in the first invocation of factorial method. Now the fact method got invoked again with the i minus 1 value, that is 4, alright? Again the same thing will happen in the separate call stack in the separate not in a separate call stack but in a separate memory which is allocated for this invocation now and in the stack obviously the recent invocation will be on the top because it is last in first out and whichever method is called at last will first go out so that will be on the top of the stack now again the same factorial will be called with the i minus 1 value that is 3 similarly next time again it will be called like 2 all right and when i was 2 and we again call this 
factorial method which i minus 1 that is 1 so again the same factorial method will be called with the value 1 all right and you see when this particular instance of means the last instance means the topmost instance on the stack of factorial method will be invoked the value of i is 1 i is the parameter out here so here in the beginning you can check the condition like if i is less than or equal to 1 return 1 means here i'm not invoking any particular method so what will happen it will not further invoke anyone but it will just return a value 1 all right to the that instance from where it was invoked so as soon as it returned the value it will be popped out from the stack returning the value 1 all right now which one is at the topmost position this factorial 2 all right so again this one was in action and it was actually got executed till this particular point because at this particular point we invoked the another instance of factorial when it will return from this to this method the execution will begin from this line itself so what it will do for this particular instance the value of i is 2 and this factorial return the value 1 so it will just return 2 into 1 and will get popped out because after that there is nothing mentioned so it will popped out and the last value which is being returned is 2 similarly after that factorial 3 means this particular called instance is in the memory now again we invoked the method in this particular line that means till this particular point the execution was done so it will resume from this particular location itself so what it will do factorial i minus 1 for this particular instance for factorial 3 is 2 and for this particular instance only the value of i is 3 so it will do one thing it will just do 2 into 3 all right and which will give you 6 so similarly then this 6 will get multiplied to 4 which will give you 24 and then this 24 will get multiplied to 5 which will give it 120 so this is how when I will execute this particular program I will get the factorial and accordingly if it is a bigger number you will get the output as per that alright so this is how you can use the factorials anywhere when you want to break the overall solutions into smaller ones with the same kind of implementation.